Hi there, I'm James Dapache, and this is Coffee and a Case Note. Deceptively straightforward one today, team. Hope I can convince you of that as we work through it. The year is 2013. We have a husband and wife who are the founders of a company. The founder, withdraw founder, the company <laughs> provides recruitment services to call centres. The owner of the company, in the original incarnation of it, is the husband, Mr A, and another party, right? Mr. A and another party, the two 50-50 shareholders at the time of foundation. Flash forward four years to 2017, and there is a restructure. And as a result of the restructure, the owners of the company, or I should say the owner of the company, becomes a holding company above the operational one, and the shareholders of that holding company become the husband, Mr. A, and a different set of interests to the other co-shareholder from earlier. So we can forget about our 2013 other shareholder. The point is, as at 2017, we have a transaction where the husband on one side and a different set of interests on the other side become the shareholders of the holding company in respect of which our recruitment for call center company is uh, the subsidiary. Got it? I made that sound more difficult than it is, I promise. So, what our husband and wife say, in short, is this 2017 transaction was the result of undue influence and Section 232 of the Corps Act corporate oppression that we speak about all the time. Can't wait to speak about it again. <laughs> the point here is that they kicked off a piece of litigation that was fairly large. We'll call that our big bit of litigation, our substantive bit of lit litigation. So that is on foot, right. That case is ticking over. And what begins to happen, pardon my cuffs, what, what begins to happen as that, as that case is ticking over is that the husband and wife are taking substantial loans from the company. Uh, it turns out to be about $316,000. So after they commence their proceedings in 2018, they start taking serious loans. And what the court finds is that there is no doubt that these loans are being applied for the purpose of paying Mr. and Mrs. A's legal costs to bring this claim, this undue influence and oppression claim. Now, the decision we're talking about today is actually an interlocutory decision. So it's a decision within the larger piece of litigation. And it is being brought by our other 2017 set of parties. And what these other 2017 shareholders, the new ones that arise in 2017, what they're doing, firstly, they're defending Mr. and Mrs. A's big claim, but they are also bringing an interlocutory dispute, a dispute within the larger claim, a small dispute within the bigger claim, to say, hey, we want an order restraining Mr. and Mrs. A from causing the company to make these loans to them in order to pay their legal fees. We want the company to stop paying any extra bonuses. We want essentially to stem this cash flowing out of the company to Mr. and Mrs. A. So that's the application we're dealing with today. In short, the court takes a look at what the company is up to, finds that it is solvent, takes a look at the loans being made to Mr. and Mrs. A themselves, and finds that while they are on what might be described as commercial terms, they use commercial in the loose sense because the business of the company isn't really making loans. That's, that's not really its job. What it, what it does is uh, provide recruitment for call centers. So in short, what the court orders is not the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine orders that our applicant seeks, really cutting off any sort of cash flow. The court says, we're gonna make light touch interlocutory orders. And the effect of those light touch orders is that no loan may be made by the company without prior notice being given to our other 27 shareholders. So that's the end of what I wanted to discuss with you today. And what I hope that quick discussion did for you was to set out how sometimes in oppression you can have what we've described in previous episodes as oppression and then oppression within oppression. So here we have Mr. and Mrs. A complaining in a global way about this transaction 
but then within it we have the defendants to that claim complaining about Mr and Mrs A using the company to pay their legal bills. Uh, a little bit fun, a little bit fiddly as we sometimes like to say, but hopefully some good value there for you as well. I hope it assisted you and I look forward to catching up again soon for another coffee and another case note. Cheers.